Wings. Welcome everybody to the Arcane Duels League kickoff. This has been building up for a little bit, and we've been kind of planning this, you know, I don't know, a few months, kind of, this idea came back, came to us after the last event, and we're like, yeah, let's try something slightly different. Um, yeah! So, so what is different? So what is different? We are doing, we're calling it a league, and in this case, the league was originally going to be one group, and now we have enough for two groups of six people to play five games, one game per week. Um, other notable changes from the previous things we've done is it's not really a tournament yet, but it'll be, once you're done with group play, the top four will play off. It'll be top two from each group. Um, once that has happened, uh, we'll crown a champion and we'll do another season two. And we'll announce more rules for that later. However, the other interesting things here is we're setting to, we're trying to stick to a strict schedule of one game per week. And before those games get played, everybody will know what mage they're up against. So we're going to announce both the competitor matchups and what mages they chose, and you have between uh, also, roughly Tuesday to Sunday to play that game. Also, yeah. you know, you'll know which opponent you're facing before you choose the mage you're playing? No. No. Okay. Nope. nope. That one is just too logistically pain in the ass. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's Never mind. We are going to announce that's both legit. the matchup and the mage at the same time. You're going to choose your mage without knowing who you're playing against. We may change that for the future pending feedback, but for now... You will choose a mage. It'll be due by Monday. Tuesday, we'll announce both the mages and the, the matchups. All right? What if you don't get a mage in? If you don't get your mage in on time, which is, I think I said, 23.59 Central Time, Monday night, we're randomizing it for you. Or whenever I wake up Tuesday morning. Yeah, or whenever, yeah, whenever he wakes up. I, have, I, can make a, I can make a random random number generator that goes 1 to 14. You'll get, you'll get your mage <laughs> choice from that. Um so, and duplicates are allowed. Duplicates are allowed. You can use whatever mage you want whenever you want. There's no restriction on mage or numbers, but if you don't submit your mage choice through the email that we have said, competitors, then you will not have a mage <laughs> choice. And that's all been in, sent out to the competitors themselves. This is mostly explaining for everybody else. So, with that in mind, why don't we run down the list of competitors, yeah? All right, let's do it. Yeah. All right. So these are the twelve people who actually responded first. We have three more in the waiting. We'll talk to them, talk about them in a few minutes. First of all, we have Sir Jason Crage, Where Kingdom, Farkas, Red Dice Diaries, Keechin, Jax Mac, Shoepuff, Nabmaster, myself, Schnanti over here, Einmeka, and Biblofilter. Those are the twelve competitors we're looking at. We'll split them up into two groups nice. here very shortly, uh, once we actually get rolling. And, so we uh, have it. So this is the official order. judges are Koshade and me. The right? official judges are Koshade and you. We have three alternates at the moment, not including you two. Uh, the three alternates are Jay Buzzsaw, Victor E, and Aridigas Fan. Um, those guys are being held on to the side in case someone has to drop. They can come in, but they are also being given first priority for the next season. So. Yeah. We appreciate the interest. We're sorry we couldn't fit you in this time. We were trying to stick to our hard. 12 caps so that we're not overwhelmed by the first season we get a roll for it. Um, anything else I'm missing, guys? Do we, do we need to talk more about the rules? We, we may want to highlight um, some of the rules. Yeah, changes. we're going to highlight a couple of rules here. There's been a lot of talk in the last uh, month since Necromancer has been released and uh, the last three months since Druid's been released. Or what has it been? Six months? Uh, since know. August. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, right? Um, but one of the things that we've landed on for this particular tournament is we're going to try out a new description of the swarm trait, and we can, we'll go over that in a minute. Um, but we are also going to clarify the embalmed from the Necromancer set, and um, I just want to talk about that real quick. We're going to make it so that it targets the thing that it is copying, and it will become very clear why. Yeah, afterwards. specifically so, using the word target because it makes the rules not stupid. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Well, uh, for one, it actually uh, brings it more in line with Resurrection and Animate Dead. Right? Yep, yep. Because they both target the things that they're dealing with in the graveyard, or the discard. Whatever Graveyard is. is a magic term. <laughs> Disc discard is an Mage Wars term. Yeah. So, who wants to... Is, you got it probably written and out so many million times, Koshe. Do you want to do the I have the swarm, swarm up, rundown? too, if you don't want to do that. Uh, the swarm trait? Yeah. Um, 
well, there's just uh, there's some other additions that we had, such as like how burns work. Yeah, we just made it a clarification that the burn is actually considered flame damage. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, and the whole point of that was so that magma golems can't damage other magma golems with their own damage of flames. Um, it was already assumed by most people that it is, and this is just a clarification. Yep. Right. Um, for dig in and press the attack, um, we actually talked to the original designer of those those cards. And basically, the reason why we made an errata to it in this tournament was because um, the cards themselves actually apply to the whole arena, uh, whereas formations are designed to be within only the zone that they're in. Um, so that's why we just made a change. Most people already were just doing that and didn't realize that it was arena-wide. We just wanted to put that in here just to make sure people knew. Um, so with swarms, um, there has been a big discussion um, Basically, um, over like what is a spell and what is an object. Several big discussions. <laughs> um, there's been some misinformation from some players that don't really play anymore uh, that decided to to chime in, uh, saying that objects cease to be spells. Um, however, when you really look at the rules, um, there's mm -hmm. a number of cards plus rulings that um, the rule is kind of uh, ambiguous. But when you look at actual cards, you can tell that it's supposed to mean that spells are also supposed to be, or objects are supposed to also be spells, such as, um, I think there's some equipment, like the Avarian yeah, Halberd, I want to say. the Halberd is one, and um, there was a few of them number of way rings. further back, too. There's a bunch of different examples out there, but going forward, we wanted to say that, yes, objects are spells, so, to, so we don't have to errata a ton of different cards to make them function. Uh, what does this mean? It means that the current iteration of Swarm uh, means that it can't be attacked by spells, which means that, like, creatures, which means that um, conjurations, um, a bunch of diff just stuff just suddenly didn't work on Swarms. Yeah, and since, so, like you um, mentioned, the reason we changed it is so that we only had to change Swarm instead of changing every other spell in the game. Yeah, um, <laughs> so what we wanted to do is actually we did sit down with the original designer of this card. And um, we had a conversation over what he wanted out of swarms, and um, we t we told him that um, basically, like we're looking to get this into that sort of line there, and yeah. uh, basically we came up with 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 this idea here, and that is uh, that um, <clears throat> the creatures with a swarm trait can't be targeted by non-attack actions or spells that don't specifically target swarm creatures, and so what that basically means is. Um, What that basically means is, it, is, it, is that attack actions include things like traps, uh, damage barriers, uh, conjurations, things like that. Um, and we wanted to get all of those things in line. So that's why we have targeted by non-attack actions, because we didn't want things like fire traps to just be like, oh, bees can't burn. <laughs> um, you know, they can't be yeah. set on, you know, not set on fire, but literally incinerated. Yeah. So you, you, there's action. another issue there too, yeah. and that is that um, it originally says attack non-attack spells. Yes. Right? So what we did, thing. what yes. we did was add actions or spells um, because a creature is still a spell, but it is not an attack spell. So by the basic ruling of all objects are spells, creatures would not be able to attack swarms. So that's yeah, the that's... original intent was that they can be attacked. <laughs> uh, and instead of just saying creatures can attack swarms, it made way more sense to be like, okay, they can suffer damage from stuff. So we added yeah. the ability. Yeah, we, we had to word it this way so that traps would work. And so that, um, um, what's it? Temple of Light can work and Ballista can yeah, work. Yeah, half a dozen and things. Stuff so... like that. Yep. Um, so the other major change we made. So that's relate. essentially why attack actions are a thing. I would really suggest if you're confused on attack actions, just look it up in the uh, supplement. It's actually really interesting to, to see how attack actions are broken down. Um, some other things that we did based on uh, balancing, we, we actually put out a, a giant submit your games. And, um, and uh, we played probably at least... 
I, I probably alone played at least 40 to 50 games, and I know I saw oh, a bunch man. of other yeah, we players played a doing ton. games. Um, and that is that we wanted to, we wanted to keep the um, swarms roll additional strikes equal to their remaining health. So they'll do a base of four attacks um, right. with their uh, with their base creature. Um, but we did make it that they're immune to conditions, which is normal. Healing and life gain that does not target swarms are immune to that. And the reason why we put that in is because of the way that um, the swarm trait works. Um, basically, as you gain life, uh, you not only gain life like a normal creature does, but you get buffs to everything else. And um, in the games where we saw people play two to three Bs, oftentimes four, um, they would be able to manipulate the board in a way that they could deal six critical damage. If it gets damaged, they would run back, heal it with things that can bypass finite life, um, and yep. then go back in the fray without losing a B. They might lose two. That was common. But after the third one or fourth one, uh, they just would die. Uh, there were a few ways to to beat the bees that way. I will point that out. Uh, but it kind of like how we have the Disciple of Radiance changes, there is a way to beat it, but it's so one-dimensional that you have to... Well, it ended up being counter... that the best counter to bees was bees. Yeah, that like that. <laughs> and so it's sort of like it's sort of like one of those things where uh, we wanted to bring it more in line with how a level two seven mana creature functions, yeah. uh, rather than it being like kind of like how Disciple of Radiance, where you know they sort of they get a ridiculous amount of damage uh, out of very little. Uh, it's the same thing with swarms. Yep. Um, I think we've beaten that horse to death. You guys want to move on? Yeah, to I think next? it's I think it's pretty much the swarm trades. I just wanted to I just wanted to say going forward, in case anyone's running there. Yep, no, it was a good job that's, to that's right. explain it. There's there's one more thing I'd want to say about that, and that is one of the phrases that we removed from swarm trait was the or affected by phrase. Ah, yes, um, that is important. And and if things if they couldn't be affected by spells, that would rule out all sorts of ways to damage them. Idol of Pestilence wouldn't work. Uh, Consecrated Ground wouldn't work. Ice Spikes wouldn't work. Hellfire Trap wouldn't work. Like all, like all the terrains. And then um, like Caltrops, Gravicor wouldn't work on them. Um, so in order to keep it so that most things interacted the way they were supposed to interact, we removed the affected by clause so that now they can be damaged by Idol of Pestilence, which makes sense if anybody has followed any of the talk about bees in the last five years <laughs> they be they can be affected by stuff like that and a quick um, point that i also want to make out all of these rules are posted at the url you can read at the top here they're on the forums it's hard to miss if you have any questions please shoot us an email or something yeah yep so anyway that's that's swarms for this tournament yeah just this tournament rule um, we, this is also a pilot for that idea so really. Moving on to Embalmed, um, let's just like clear that whole thing. Uh, so Embalmed came out of the Necromancer Academy. A lot of people are probably still new to it. Um, we wanted to change it a little bit, uh, and, and let me explain why. The Embalmed turns something into an undead creature, and there is a very specific tactic you can do with Necromancer, um, where you can place Eternal Servant onto undead as they're being copied. Um, so we wanted to put... Uh, <clears throat> so basically, the the effect is you can you can essentially get a creature that isn't supposed to be um, brought back infinite times, uh, and that was fine under uh, most of the creatures that we tested with. Um, but we wanted to remove that for swarm specifically, uh, only because we ran into certain problems with that in testing, uh, especially with things like. Um, you know, things like removing damage instead of healing. It got around just certain things that we didn't want to get around. Um, so that's why we added remove target non-epic living creature uh, because of that. Yep, so, and they can't specifically target swarms, so thus you cannot re-embalm the bees. Which, so for, yeah. I don't know if so for tried to embalm has, a bee before, but it sounds like a bad plan. <laughs> so for anyone that has questions over how Eternal Servant works, you can essentially do something like um, the, the Messenger of Bimshala... You could eternal servant it, and you could then kill it or have it die, and then you can eternal servant it again, and it would get all the summon effects constantly. Uh, there's a ton of different combos like that out there, so 
you know, mind blown in terms of all the things you can do. Uh, but that's essentially um, what we're doing. Also, um, just for any clarifications, it becomes a complete copy. So in terms of level, school, life, all that stuff, it all becomes that copy. Um, and, and there's no clause in the rules anywhere that says it ceases to be that copy once it is destroyed. Yes. So uh, the embalmed only exists as a spell in your spell book. Um, after, there were, after that, after it's cast, it becomes a copy of whatever it is that it copied forever until the game's yeah. over. And, and I just, uh, I know there's some also ambiguity over how legendary creatures, um, just because the ruling of Eternal Servant uh, says that you place the marker as you do it. And I know you could technically place it on embalm first as it turns into it. There's an ambiguity there. And the way that we're just going to view it there is that you can't Eternal Servant legendary creatures. Yep, that's a good right. interpretation well, to know. Eternal Servant, yeah, is already, already worked that way. But you can't, what we're saying is Eternal Servant has to go on after the creature has been completely summoned. Yes. Yes. Which means so, that that's... the embalmed has been has copied the thing that it's copying first. And then you have the option to put Eternal Servant on it. And if it's legendary... You don't have that option. Yeah. So for for so for this turn, that's how we're sort of looking at that. Um, I think that's most of the rule, the new that's, rule questions. Yep. That I believe that um, is the rule questions. I think symbiotic orb is new too. The reason why I put it in a, a void attack step is to um, just put it in line with all the other to arena ties it. Yeah, uh, because there is no void attack step in academy. Yep. All right. Any more rules? Because I switched over to the. <laughs> The other tab. <laughs> no, let's shuffle them seeds. All right, yeah, we're gonna shuffle the seeds right and let's just do another one because why the heck not? And yeah, man. Group stage. Start the group stage. All right. So these are the groups um, that we're looking at. Now we have to go to predictions. Ah, okay. Predictions do just, exist. Just, you can do those. Do you, <laughs> do you need me to write these down? So that we can see who's right and who's dead. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> or are we just going to write them down? Cut, do it. <laughs> All right. What are we doing? He's writing down the predictions so we can make fun of people who suck at predicting things. Oh, isn't there a way to do that? Well, you can do that on oh, the website. Something, too. You can do that on, on oh, channel. Just doing it on, well, that's, that's yeah. who's advancing, though. Yeah, we're just going to do it on, on live here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Screw it. Let's just do it live. Uh, we're doing it live. Yep. Uh, so yeah, these are the groups that we're looking at. This is the first time any of us are seeing it, so we're as surprised as you are. Um, just for those who might want us to read them, Jason Craig is in a group with Jack Smack, Wear Kingdom, Schneenti, Shoepuff, and Farkas. The other group, Group B, is Red Dice Diaries, myself, Keechin, Nab Master, Biblo Filter, and Ein Mika. There is a lot of strong players in this tournament. This is going to be a fun league. Uh, I mean... I mean, so how many people advance to the uh, the next the top next two round? Top from each group. Top two from each group. Yep. Man. And it's a um, one single elimination playoff because we don't have 15 weeks to take. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, do we want to talk about each player, or do we want to just say what are our predictions? Well, it's up to you guys. You can give some reasons for the predictions by talking about the players. I mean, Jack Smack has been, he, he's a returning champion uh, for the, you know. That group, Army interestingly, Wars. has a couple of them. He, he hasn't <laughs> been playing for a while, I don't think at least. So I don't know where his skill level's at. He dominated some good games in the last tournament he was in. He got a little lucky, but I won't take that away from the awesome skill that he brought. You know, he, he presented himself in the right position to get, to get lucky, if you want to put it that way. <laughs> yep, yep, he's in a good spot for it. Um, but so you're also looking I, at Wear Kingdom, who won the last one, and NT, who played against him, all in the same group. Yeah, you're right. Oh so my god. That should be really interesting. Um, I, and I want to point out that Shoepuff has been playing like a madman, and yeah. he does really well. Farkas got second place at, um, at Gen Con, yeah. What was that? Gen Con and Winter War. Yeah, and, oh, and Winter, Winter War. So, like, clearly he has some skill that's going to be presented. This is going to be a crazy bracket to watch. Um, and Where? Jason, I think. Yeah, Wear Kingdom just won the last. Yeah, he won the last one, so. Roundup. Yeah. Of the BMW. 
And Jason, he plays daily against a lot of these players, and uh, he's able to keep up. So it's it'll be really That'd interesting be to, see to see who wants to yeah. bring what. Yeah, um, I'm more. I, I think like, it ends up being it. It could end up being who gets to play the better matchup. Now then they can prepare for a mage. All right, so I mean, Jason tends to play more aggressively. Jack Smack tends to play this like all around style, but generally more aggressive. Yeah, I don't know. Like honestly, it's been a while, so I have no. Yeah, idea. I don't even. I don't really even know his style anymore because like. You know, it's it's because he's been gone so long. Um, Where Kingdom always just brings super finely built books that are clearly have had a lot of games, um, and he plays within the pocket well. He plays long games well. Um, what I mean by pocket is like the mid game. He's able to sort of just say like, "Here's a creature no one uses. I figured out how to use it right, and it's it's kicking your butt." You know. Yep. Um. I mean, Enti is just a strong player, just all around. Uh, he he likes to go for those long games, but I think he won German Nationals too. Yeah, I maybe did you he win just there. one year. I thought Enti, you have to tell would... me that in the chat. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, anyway, yeah. So, who who are you thinking? Who comes out of that group? So we're looking at top two. Top two. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Last year and the year before, yeah, he won two. Okay, yeah, two I, I thought he did. And that's that's a pretty big tournament. I think it's like what over twenty five people. I think. I mean, they had over uh, forty one year. What I remember is but, it? Wow, that's crazy. But I don't think last year had forty, but they did a few years ago. So, um, yeah. Okay, so anybody have a D six around? I want to pick two like that. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I'm getting my dice out. I. It's going to be a little rough here. I, I actually think that... Um, man, who's going to advance here? The magic dice are telling me that... Uh, Enti and Shupuff are going to move on. I'm okay with sticking sticking by that. <laughs> I yeah. mean, Enti... I, I don't think Shupuff's going to make it, and I'll tell you why. Sure. Now, now he's going he's gonna to prove me wrong on this, and that'll be great. But every single time I see Shupuff play... He has the same strategy with a different mage. Oh, he, he's a big Timmy player. It's kind of hilarious. I kind of love so, it. So <laughs> once once you've seen that strategy and you have a, a way to, if you have a way to deal with it, and now that you know you're going at, against somebody that does that, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to survive. So he is going to need to adapt in order to, to move on. Yep. And, we'll see how that goes. I'm still still or okay he could just, it still. Or he could just run. Or he could just like smack things up. Of hard. note, uh, Shupo's actually playing in the background right now. That's great. I mean, I hope he wins. <laughs> Which is funny. I don't know. Is he playing the Amber The Warlord, or? yeah. Um, well, I haven't seen him cast a creature, so he's trying something new. Well, he had creatures earlier. I think they. Well, no, he may not have. I don't remember. Anyway, not important. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, all so, hey, if he's trying something new, that's awesome. Yeah, trying so something you new is what's how you, you expand pick, as a player. Um. Man, it's hard to predict because we're we're throwing these people into a situation that they've never played before, right? Like they know exactly what mages are going up against and exactly who's playing it, mm. right? So yeah, so it'll be really that. interesting to watch. So and or play. I think this is playing. gonna be wild guesses from everyone. Oh yeah, that's why I rolled <laughs> dice. Um. And I'm going to go with, uh, see, I, I just, I want to, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I want to, so everyone, everyone will advance. Everybody's no, I want to, I want to pick Farkas because I think he's got the tools that he needs to advance. He's a flexible player, but I don't think he has the time to change his books ah, that he's going to need. That's uh, an interesting point. So. Um, I, I'm going to go with, uh, Sir Jason and Enti, I think, because nice. I think both of them have the time to ca calibrate their books against what they're going to face. Yep. Um, and I, and I think Enti is going to shy away from his hyper enchant style for this tournament and we'll see how that goes for him. He'll never shy away from 
<laughs> He's listening to you right now, being like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mass intent for life, man. <laughs> um, now, NT doesn't, if, if he sticks with that style, he does not advance if people start running Purge and Destroy. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, Coach, I mean, I, did you pick for this one yet? <laughs> I, I actually agree that with with you guys on NT probably being one one player that advance. Yeah, um, we're all making the safe pick on that one. I I, I, I just know. think I think he has enough versatility in his knowledge of Mage Wars to be able to play a different type of book and surprise us. And um, I and I I'm curious to see you know how that how that comes out. Uh, of course, with the, all the new cards, it's going to be a, a wild guess here. So. I'm torn right now, actually, between where King Demarcus. Um, I, I kind of am thinking Farkas, only because he's been dealing with a lot of these cards for a lot longer than these other players have, because he's seen he's seen them. He was a playtester yeah, for a lot longer. Makes sense. Well, he also picked um, up his sets at Gen Con. Exactly. Um, so he's been, I'm sure, working with like Victory and some other players on how to properly use those. Uh, at the same time, where Kingdom, he has a knack for bringing out interesting ideas and plays from cards that you just didn't think of doing. Um, doing, yeah. doing the unexpected. And yeah. that's going to be worth, card. that's going to be worth a lot in this kind of environment. Yeah. Like he's been playing for, for years now. And so I'm sure he has these books that are just like, haven't been played in a long time that he can update, play some games with, and then just bring them out. Um, so I, it's between, you know what? I, and he's listening no, no, Enti. We're going Where Kingdom Farkas, man. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Just despite the guys in the chat. Right. Yes, yes. Despite the guy in the chat. I like um, it. I I always look forward to watching his games. He's he plays very very well, yeah. and um, and I and I'm totally going to be wrong probably, but I think Where Kingdom Farkas have a very good shot, so I'm going to put them down. Sounds good. All right, Group B. This is a red I, dice I'm myself, Kitchen, Nab Master. Bibliofilter and it's, I miss it's it. all recorded. Yeah, yeah I'm recording. It. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, group, group B. B. What you got? Well, I know that Sharkbait hasn't played in way too long, so he's not going to do anything. Nah, I'm gonna do wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We got games starting on Tuesday, I think. So two days from now, the game starts. Uh, yep. They can technically start that early if they have planned that. Yeah. yeah. Tuesday to Sunday, basically. Yep. Um, Let's talk about the players really quick. Uh, Red Dice, uh, he, he has a lot of uh, knowledge on the game. He clearly plays Paladin a lot. Um, Understatement of the year. You know, in terms of other mages, it's kind of rare to see him play other ones. So, you know, it, it makes you kind of think, like, if he does choose to play something not Paladin... If he can break out of his own head and break out of the unpredi- or the, the predictability, then he'll yeah. have a chance of at least upsetting a few of them, I think. Uh, you know, if you if you see his paladin, like you can probably watch Tuesdays with Wooden Heads and figure out what's gonna happen. I'll yeah. give him, you know, there is he does have a couple different ones. So plug for Tuesdays with Wooden Heads. Yeah. Um, like was it like seven of them or something? Yeah. Know, no. Um. Here's the thing. I think that he is actually done perhaps the most research on his opponents. Ah. Okay. Of anyone um, in this group, and point. that might. That might count for something. Knowing yeah, what your opponents yeah, are fair. likely to do or favor is going to be really important. And so I'm not I'm not going to throw out his ability to win uh, at all. Uh, I do think that he is going to have to get much more aggressive than he usually is in order to pull out the win. Um, so that's kind of some of the things we've seen red yeah. dice in the past. Is uh, he'll have a solid books until he reaches the finals. And then people figure it out. You know what I mean? Um, moving on to Sharkbait. Yeah, that guy's an asshole. Uh, <laughs> it just like Sharkbait has one major problem, and that's at some point in the game he's like, "Ah, screw it," and he throws fire at something. <laughs> well, when, and when I... at that point, Akiro just leaves him. Yeah. <laughs> so, I would say that Sharkbait has to be a little bit more careful, as opposed Ooh, to Red Dice has to be a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> In order to actually pull this out, I mean, I mean, Shark, <laughs> I, I honestly think that your strength is more. I mean, you have timings that are down. You like, I know when I'm going to strike, and if you're not prepped for this, you're just dead. And um, 
that's kind of a big advantage because a lot of people don't think about what turn they tend to want to attack. They just think, I just want to play forever. I want to play for the super, super long game. Where if you hit at the right point, then, um, you know, you can sort of just crack their armor that they're trying to build. It's, it's one of the big advantages I think you have is when you make your books is you have that competitive spirit in you. Um, Grr. So, Keijin... <laughs> Oh, did you want to say anything about your own ability to win Shark Day? Uh, no, not really. I I know what okay. I can do. We'll see. I mean, I I've played against most of these guys at least a couple times. Uh, the, yeah. yeah, it. We'll see. I have a couple books that I think are ready, but I haven't had as much practice as I would have liked prior to some of this stuff. So, uh, C point one. Yeah, that was tongue in cheek. Can, uh, uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, if I can, if I can keep my patience, I, t- I tend to do okay. Um. Oh, yeah, I mean, in terms of getting tilted, if you get bad rolls, it can happen. You yeah. Know? Yep. Yeah, but bad rolls are going to screw everyone up. Yep, they are. It's going to happen. All right, Keechan. Well, we, we don't have Romeo in this tournament to throw 10 dice rocks. I hear. I talked so, to him the other day. He may actually rocks. come back for, for later stuff, but shout That's out to awesome. Romeo if he can watch. All right, so Keechan is, I think, somewhat the favorite in this group. Um, just because he consistently does his own major wars channel and has all these awesome ideas yep, and plays games and over and over and over again. And he, he won is the first probably, Yeah, yeah. And he has he has lots of experience and he has probably the most up to date tactical play of all these people, I think. Um, second to maybe Nabmaster. Yeah. Or I not second, but Nabmaster a close second to Keijin, I think. But anyway, I think Keijin is is kind of the favored. Oh, geez, both Dan this group. Thing. That's funny. Both what? Uh, Biblo and Keijin. I just thought it was funny. Oh yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't mind me. I just noticed. I want to point out. <laughs> I want to point out about Keijin that he tends to sometimes just bring books that are very very specialized, um, such as things like his wizard that plays all the elements. Yep. I like uh, that one. Elementals, things like that. Um, so it's sort of like whenever you see Keijin play you may not know what he's bringing out. Like, yeah, if he brings out a Necromancer, is he going to go brute? Or is he going to go something really funky and weird that he came up with? I will um, give Keechin so crap for one thing when you're done. Yeah, so that's kind of one of the big advantages Keechin has, is that, like, you don't know what exactly he's putting in his book. I'm going to give Keechin um, a hard time real quick, because on the tournament that Jack Smack won, not taking away from Jack Smack, but if he'd thrown a <laughs> damn rock, Keechin might have won the game. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, throw a damn boulder. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's a good player. Right? <laughs> he's solid to play against. He's he's never really easy. And those I mean, are the ones you worry about. Especially. actually a really Madmash is a pretty good player too. I was gonna. Uh, yeah. I've seen him play a bunch of games, and he's just he's solid, man. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, there's there's very rarely a play mistake that I see come from that master. He's got it. And I, and I really actually appreciate watching his play because, like, he he has a unique yeah, get out of here. he has a very unique style as well that um, it's hard for me to pin down, which makes me think that like I need to watch more games from him. And I'm really excited to see to see games out of him this turn because I, I hope I can kind of like get an idea of where he's coming from with this game. Yep. And then we have Biblo, 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 Biblo the um, traveling man, the rule master of tournaments i would say he definitely knows how to look at the edge cases of rulings and like bring it out to its full capacity and with things like the embalms i'm very excited to see what biblo chooses to do um just because it's not dark mage only anyone can use it so who knows what he's gonna bring out and um i really am curious to watch his games and see what kind of weird rule things he's changing around He's going to bring um, back enchantment say, transfusion. It's okay. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like stuff like that. <laughs> make I mean, head like, it. <laughs> do some crazy stuff. Like, I don't know. I'm shaking my head right now. <laughs> Unholy reversal with Bimshala to kill your opponent. You know, right? Just, oh, like some, something card. crazy like that. You know, <laughs> I do love that card. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like crazy weird, like combos is what I expect to see out of his games. And yep. uh, kind of like how Keijin's unexpected with his, like, you don't know what cards he's having. Biblo is one of those, like, you don't know what weird rules he's trying to manipulate in order to get a combo on you. Yep. Um, so that's why it's always a pleasure to watch Biblo play. Yep. And I will admit to not knowing a whole lot about Aimeka. Anybody watch him? 
I don't know. That I, much I about haven't him. actually. I've seen um, him around, but I, I haven't had a chance to watch a whole lot lately because I've had my nose down trying to code, which we will go to next. There's some changes to the yeah. code that we all need to know about, but yeah, unfortunately, I, think, I can't uh, speak to I've him. Ein Mika has been uh, asking a lot of rules questions. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah. Just to get oh in the Discord channel, yeah. Get a handle, yeah. Get a handle on everything that needs to line up for his stuff to work. And they're they're informed rules questions. Like you can tell uh, he's going, yeah. he's got an idea for them. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm excited to see what he brings. Okay, um, that'll be cool to see. Yeah. So let's talk about the favorites. Oh man. <laughs> Uh, shark bait, are you going to choose yourself and be that guy? Fuck it, I'll do it. <laughs> Myself and Keechan, we're getting out of here. <laughs> why do you think Why do you think yourself? I have secret tech that nobody knows about. Duh, and All I'm right. running the tournament. I can totally just force my way through. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, no. We're going to pound you down if you try any of those shenanigans. I know, I know. It's Banned for life. The banning. The ban hammer. I'm gonna go with Nabmaster and Einmika. Really? Yep. Wow. I think I think Keaton is going to suffer a catastrophic loss or two because the dice will not go his way. <laughs> <laughs> I hope and, to see it on his channel. <laughs> and I, I think Shark I think Shark Bait's gonna have the same problem. He's gonna be like right next to going out and then in the last game somebody's just gonna dice him. I have never had that happen. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just talking not about a, not a single history time. here. Exactly. <laughs> um, now, obviously, I biasedly want Shark Bay to move on, but sorry, Shark. I think I think you're gonna have to fight even harder for it. That's eh, all right. I, I think you've got the fight in you, <laughs> but I don't know if Akira's gonna favor you. Hmm. I'm just trying to think. Like, I think Shark Bay can beat Red. I think he can beat. Nab master. I don't know about Uh When it comes yeah. to Keijin, ah, oh, geez, this is this is actually rough. I actually think it's going to be probably Keijin and uh, it's those middle. Oh man, I don't know. I I think probably Keijin and um, Shark Beast. That's who we're going with. I'm cool with that. I, I knew I was going to be the wild. We're going to ride or die. Guy. We're going to make it out, I, man. I, I, I could see Biblo making it out. Uh, the problem and is I, I could see any, any see combo of two people getting out of this particular bracket. Yeah, like, and it's I, not I quite that's... as bad as the other one, but. Well, you know, man, you know what? No, I'm going to change it. Sorry, Shark. No, I'm, going good, Kijin, Bi I'm going Kijin. I'm going Kijin Biblo. And uh, the reason why is because I think both of them can see what their opponent's mage is going to be and manipulate the book the best. Um, granted, I think other players in this can definitely make it out, but I think they're going to do it the best way. Screw you, Shark. Hey, man, I'm cool with that. <laughs> um, that being said, I really think anyone can make it out. Like, seriously, I, I do think anyone can. Yeah, I was trying to see if I can add Enti's new uh, email to it, but I'll, I'll adjust that later off the stream. Anyway. Um... Yeah, they don't need it on the stream. <laughs> right. Oh, was, man. Was so, I yeah, I'm I'm more than happy to be wrong, but I, I figured I'd take the wild card pick oh, I'm for, gonna this, be wrong. For, totally, for this group. I totally know I'm going to be wrong, but the but the fact is it'll be fun to watch. This it will be. A, this will be an interesting very cool. one. I'm, I'm excited to yeah. see how these go. All right, so there's a few more things we need to cover prior to stream ending. Sorry for the last bit of cleanup. Um, number one, uh, the mage, those who are watching... Um, and those who are not, actually, those who are competing need to have their mage submissions into arcanedules at gmail.com by tomorrow night. I'm going to remind you that, hey, get your mage submissions in. Because it if you don't, be we're randomizing it yeah. for you, and we're posting the first matchups on Tuesday, and we may not necessarily follow what is listed on Challenge, okay? So, get your yeah, stuff in. Yeah, so the big thing is, watch the email threads, keep that going. Yes, Please, and, uh, if you yeah. coordinate email, or if you coordinate anything, email include arcanedules at gmail.com so we can at least vouch for you that you're trying. Because if you aren't, you get a warning, and if you get, if you go two weeks with no response, we just kick you out. So, we're going to be real hard on this one, because this way here we keep everything moving, and we can do more of these. Yeah, that's kind of the big goal, is we want to get this tournament 
done in a timely manner so we can get more in, so we can hopefully get more players in. Yep. Um, one of the other things um, I want to point out are the patch notes, brief patch notes for the update that I pushed out today. You may notice in the Octagon background update. here... Yep, Octagon update. So you'll notice in the background here, we have a game. Um, in the upper corner of the game, I'm going to make this a little wider here. Um, upper corner of the game, you'll notice that you can now see both the turn and the phase that it is, which is, I think, pretty cool. I'm a fan of how that works because Octagon added a bunch of functionality that we took advantage of. The other thing to notice is that we have all of the phases on here. We've included initiative reset channeling now. Um, based on feedback, we may combine initiative and reset into one big automated part, but you're going to have to cycle through each of these. The reason we did that is because now you can channel something. You both have to pass channeling to channel. Once you've channeled, you can do things like reveal regrowth before the upkeep, reveal poison blood before the upkeep, uh, do pillar of righteous flame before it loses its life, dissipate, etc. All right? Um, That's so nice. So that, that is a quality of life improvement on that side. The other things to note that this one's pretty important for those druid players out there, and I mention this because druids are always a pain in the ass whether you're playing or whether you're trying to make them validate. So, <laughs> <laughs> druids can now place the Wand of Ice and Fire and any of the other water spells that were giving them trouble, like the Ring of Ocean's Depths, and there was a couple other ones that were like level 1 ores. Those all now work. Um, the problem is they only work on the in-game validator. They do not work on the out-of-game validator, so if you're trying to build a druid, check it in-game, before you think you're good, okay? Just want to make that note. Uh, the in-game validator, okay. or the, the out-of-game validator will not validate properly for the cost. I will be working on that over the next, that's my next project, but it's not, not there yet. Um, so the workaround is to use it in-game. The only other thing I really fixed today was Mordox Obelisk no longer hits your mage. Hooray! Yeah! That was a pain to find. So. I didn't even realize that it did. Yeah, it, it's been how much I've it. played Mordox Obelisk. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and there's there's some updates I'll be pushing out. Um, the other thing I guess we should mention is that all um, all cards on Octagon are legal, and all Octagon cards include all the cards now. They have all the way up through Necromancer. Um, yeah, so play with some of the new cards. New promos, all including that. a couple of new promos. Yep, a couple of new promos. You are not allowed to use Academy Mages, I guess, technically. Well, no, you know what? Screw it. You can technically use Academy Mages. <laughs> Bring them to the arena. Yeah, if you really want to. I have no problem letting that happen. <laughs> However. <laughs> However, you are not able to upgrade them to arena before you use them. I do advise against such a play. Um, so... You're going to be behind a lot. Hey, yeah. man, Beastmaster has a pretty cool chance. Yeah. So he's still has, only yeah. channel seven, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, man. Anyway, yeah. And you guys got anything else to add on the stream? Otherwise, let's let's let the games begin. This is gonna be a fun one. I'm excited for for how this is gonna look. Wishing everybody luck. Um. Oh yeah. Do you want to talk about replays really quick? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Um, replays. I sent this in an email out to all the competitors. But for those of you who don't know, Octagon because added a can't... cool new feature. We probably won't be there for all the games. Yes. But we still want to get them on. We still want to cast them. We still want to make it there Yep. Uh, in terms of like, you know all that stuff. Yep, so Octagon added a new feature. It's right here. You can see I'll be pointing to it on the screen here. It's game history. You can look at game history, and you can see a replay of all the games that you may have now. So this also includes and will make a replay for games that you join midway through. So like the game in the background, I will have a replay file for. Um, the replay file is inside, find your Octagon directory, usually it's in my documents or something like that, find your Octagon directory, and inside that Octagon directory is a history uh, tab. Inside the history is three files per match. If you send us all three of those files, we can replay it and possibly recast the game at a later date. It makes it a lot easier, it's a small file, it's not hard to send across the email, for example, um, and it makes our job a little bit easier so we can't, we can't always be online for every game. So, so if, if we're not there, yeah, you guys are in Europe and you're playing at, you know, what would be 3 a.m. here, feel free to play it and then name your game something like, you know, ADM or ADM League match or something like that, and then send it to us with that name. Yeah, preferably put the participants Discord. in the name, too, just so we know yes, that would who be nice. it is. It's a little bit easier and we can check it, but it makes it easier on us. Um, um, this also makes it so... You know, if you want to judge there, let us know. But I think most of the players know each other, so they won't need it. Yeah. But otherwise, if you guys want to judge, just don't play until you get a hold of us. Yeah. Um, 
So but please also so if you're if you're not getting a response from your opponent, please don't wait till Sunday to let us know. Um, granted, we should be able to see the emails, but that doesn't mean we're tracking everything all the time. If it's yeah, Friday and you've I, heard from nobody, be like, uh, guys. Ideally, you're CCing us in at Arcane Duels at Gmail. There's no ideal. We should make it a requirement. CC us for everything. <laughs> Just so we have a trail. Yeah. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, and I know we have a lot of the participants in the chat. If you guys have any questions about this tournament, about cards, you know, rules, things like that, uh, I guess now will be the time to ask. If you have um, predictions, you can do that too. <laughs> um, actually, uh, I don't know. If Enti says it. that you're not making it, Shark. Yeah, I know. Nobody thinks that. It's okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> the... Gonna blindside them with fire. That rarely happens. People mostly see it coming, they still burn. Uh... <laughs> what I like about this tournament is, um, is I really like that you'll know what mage you're playing ahead of time. Um, and the I mind really games like, are gonna be great. And, and, and the player that's going to be playing that mage in particular. So it'll allow you to not only, like, mind game, yeah, exactly, like, how can I counter a priestess? But it'll also be like, how can I counter Jack Smack playing priestess? You know what I mean? Like those sorts of examples, like is I think a really cool dynamic that we've never seen, at least in the ADMW tournaments. Before. Right. We've never really run one like this. And so I'm excited to see how the season one goes. And if it, if it ends up going well and, or becoming more popular, we may expand some of the rules yeah. for the next one. And we'll still do ADMW we do. tournaments where we do one mage per thing. But uh, for right now, league is, League is League taking is priority. Well this, um, by my estimations, time. the regular season shall wrap up. I looked at this earlier. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Should four, wrap five, up by Origins, right? Six, just before Origins. So the regular season's due date for the final match is June 9th. Um, there may be some fudge factor in there based on if someone has to reschedule one of the weeks and We'll work with individual Especially cases like on that champions. one. Especially um, in the final matches, yeah. Right. So I will make the point that is the week before Origins. Origins is uh, <laughs> the week after that. So there may be a week break from, or a week and a half break from the end of the regular season of the playoffs. We'll we'll play that closer by ear after that, but the playoffs should only last two weeks because there's only two rounds. So <laughs> it should be yeah, fine. Yeah, You'll yeah. have a you champion only put going. only two people. Well, yeah, you only have two people from each side, and it's a four to two to champion. So... Right. Um, well, yeah, well, anybody has any questions. questions or issues, please let us know. Otherwise, if you make some predictions, put them on the forums, email us, say hi, subscribe, do all that other bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, um, for anyone that's watching, we do have a, a Discord. Um, oh, if yeah, you're good, not good aware point. of it, uh, it is uh, the... What is it actually called? It's called the Mage Wars Community Chat, I think. Yeah, it is. Um. You can find it online at, at, at the forums. Uh, we'll probably just like post a link, or if we don't post the link, just be like, "Where's the link?" Uh, yeah, in the uh, YouTube video that we upload. Yep. Um, so please check it out. We'll also have all of the videos that we cast for this tournament on on the Arcane uh, Jewels YouTube. Yeah. And then we'll put a list of all the games on the Ar uh, Mage Wars forums under the events section, Arcane Duels League. Uh, it should be the second post in. Should just have all the vods. Yep, and we'll put all the the announcements and stuff on, as well as shooting email out to the competitors. We'll make sure that everyone can see it if they were, if you're just watching. All right. Yep. If we got anything so, else we missed, and is there any other questions from the peanut, but the peanut gallery while we're looking, here? Seriously looking forward to all of these games, guys. Um, like, uh, there's so many good players in this, and I and I want to see what people bring to this. Yeah, this should be a, a really fun one. I'm, yeah, it's gonna, I'm really looking forward to seeing what specific tech gets put into books against specific mages. And yep. new yeah. tech, too. You know, yeah. like just new combos that we've never seen. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I we just had a set release, what, a week ago? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I, I remember when we did the uh, Gen Con War books. Oh, yeah. like, we knew that we could... Well, it was it was interesting <laughs> it was because cool. we had yeah. to prepare for one of three different mages that we yeah. could fight. Mm -hmm. That was fun. And yeah, and I really want other people to experience that because that was that oh, was yeah. a lot of fun thinking and planning and and getting things. Yeah, the time scale is a little shorter for this one, but it should be interesting. It would be interesting yeah. to see, like you know how like there's like a lot of people say Druid is really good, Necro is like really good in terms of like being strong. It's it would be really interesting to see how okay, I'm gonna pick Druid because it's a good mage, and then someone just goes like all fire. You know what I mean? Right. Like, just, like, how that Who changes. Who would go all fire? I mean, come on. You know what I'm no, saying. Nobody here plays. 
get out of here. Um, or, you know, Necromancer is all in season, and then the right? somebody's playing a nature mage, and they're like, okay, I'll just support Kralithor for the rest of my life. You know? <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Right. So, yeah. Um, this will be such a fun tournament, guys. I'm, I'm yep. looking forward to it. This is going to be a fun one. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for us. Um, we'll be yeah. around for chatting and or more games, but this should end the stream, so... I'm looking you forward guys to it. All rock. Uh, good luck to everybody in the league. Except you. Yeah, right. Except, <laughs> except me. <laughs> Fuck you, Akiro. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, um, good luck, guys. I need to go find some food. So, everybody have a fantastic night, and we will talk to you later. When in doubt, kill it with fire. Bye.